There are certain situations which we encounter as dentists when we come across a case with high demand such as the one I'm about to show you in this video today. Thanks to digitization however, things can get much more predictable. So let's take a look at the case which we have on hand today and how we could tackle it with the help of a digital workflow. So this is the case of a 28 year old male who reported with a PFM crown on the 2-1. So that's what got him to me and he requested it to be changed with a more aesthetic alternative. You can see the gross mismatch on the shade as well as the shape. Now we all know that matching a single crown to adjacent natural teeth is one of the biggest challenges in dentistry today. So I just want to show you how we could achieve a good result with the digital workflow in this particular case. Now because I want to mimic the shape of the 1-1 for symmetry, I have made a pre-op scan and sent it to the lab and the technician can use this to create a mock-up for me by copying the adjacent central incisor onto the 2-1 and now he can just send me a printed model out of this out of which I can make an index and give the patient a provisional restoration as well. Here my plan is to cut this crown out and since it's a vital tooth, I want to be as conservative as possible with the preparation. Usually I'm using a diamond burr first to get the porcelain layering out before switching over to the metal cutting carbide burr to cut the PFM framework and exposing the tooth underneath. As usual, I'm going to use soft and gentle strokes and let the carbide do all the work for me. My goal here is to expose the tooth underneath and use the crown remover to pry the crown out. Here I also have a horizontal cut to weaken the cement bond further and you can see how easily the crown comes out with the Christensen's crown remover without any trauma or any kind of discomfort to the patient. As I mentioned before, I want to be as conservative as possible for refining the prep using my burrs from the reverse preparation burr kit which is easily available with chair side. This is the shaping burr S12 which I am using here now. Once this is done, I will first pack in the triple zero retraction core so that I can work on the margins a little bit here. I can now use the FB21 from the kit again to refine the palatal preparation as well. Since I'm planning an ultra translucent crown which is a layered zirconia from Illusion, I need at least 1.5mm clearance on the palatal surface. So to check the clearance, I use this prep check strip which is exactly 1.5mm thick and this gives me a reference of whether I have enough clearance or not. The coloured spots on the tooth will be adjusted a little bit more till the strip leaves no marks at all. Once everything is done, I take my red ring burr and round off all the sharp margins and remove any sharp points. So my 3 shape cryo scanner is now ready while I pack the second cord which is a number one cord to give me some amount of horizontal retraction so I can scan the margin cleanly. I have already entered a manual shade before starting the process so I can send it as a reference to the lab. I start scanning with the usual workflow starting with the lower arch and you can see how easy this system really is. It's a class apart, be it a matter of speed or just the simplicity of the workflow. It's been there and done it all. The next step is to scan the upper arch with the preparation and obviously I have to remove the top cord and you can see that it has given me some amount of horizontal retraction as well. I scan the tooth from all angles as you can see and I continue to scan the adjacent teeth which will help me to occlude the scans in the next step. You can appreciate the clean marginal details on the file which the scanner has given me and the technician cannot really mess it up here and that is the beauty of using an intraoral scanner. The 3 shape software in fact also has a wonderful tool which is the lock tool. Using this I can lock the scanned margin because I know that the retracted gingiva will rebound so I don't want the collapsed gingiva to be updated in my scan when I'm scanning the other quadrant. So there it is, my upper scan is ready. I can go ahead and now scan the patient's occlusion. Since it is an anterior tooth, the patient's shade can be visualized easily on the TRIOS 3 software, making it very easy for the technician in the lab. I use the putty index which I had made on the printed mock-up and give a provisional restoration to the patient before discharging him. So 
you can see how effectively I have mirrored the adjacent central incisor to maintain symmetry. Once the file is received in Illusion Dental Lab, the restoration can be designed digitally, the coping can be milled and layered and delivered to me. So this really is the power of the 3 shape Trios 3 Intraoral Scanner and the digital workflow which makes such challenging cases possible and give your patients a great treatment outcome. I also think that the technician has done a wonderful job by giving this kind of an end result and that too in a short period of time thanks to the digital workflow with the 3 shape Trios. I thank you all for taking time out and watching this video. Please like, share and subscribe to Chairside Education if you haven't already and keep watching.